When it comes to strokes, time is brain. In other words, the sooner we get to the hospital, the better the chances that we will not suffer long-term effects from a stroke. And joining me today to emphasize this point and dispel some of the misconceptions about strokes is Dr. Puria Mushayeti. He's a vascular neurologist and neurointerventionist at Jamaica Hospital Medical Center. This is Jamaica Hospital Med Talk, the podcast from Jamaica Hospital Medical Center. I'm Scott Webb. So, Doctor, thanks so much for joining me today. We're going to talk about stroke, but along the way, we're going to talk about some of the misconceptions, things people think they know about stroke or may have heard about strokes and so on. So as we get rolling here, maybe you can just tell us sort of a baseline. What is a stroke? What happens when someone's having a stroke? Yeah, so what they see from outside is they suddenly lose some of the brain functions. And to count what those functions are, I mean, obviously, uh, brain helps us to move arm or leg, helps us to speak, helps us to understand when people are speaking to us, and helps us see and maintain our balance. And those areas are the very exact domains that are affected suddenly. So whenever someone experiencing a sudden difficulty in moving arm or leg, sudden difficulty maintaining balance, sudden loss of vision, sudden inability to produce the speed or understand, or any sudden abnormality in the face in the form of a face that looks droopy on one side more than the other, those are the signs of a stroke. And usually when a stroke happens, it could be very mild, it could be resolving, or it could be severe, lifelong, and make someone bed bound. So it could potentially be very critical. And the reason that it is caused is problem with blood that carries oxygen and nutrients to the brain. So the blood seizes, and then the area of brain that was receiving that blood will die. We call it infarcted, and that is underlying cause for a stroke. Yeah, and I know that they say time is brain, right? So time is of the essence. Let's talk about the misconceptions. I know there are a lot of misconceptions about stroke. Maybe you can help us separate fact from fiction. Yeah, so one misconception is that a stroke is exclusively happening in elderly, which is not correct. We see a lot of people at young age for different reasons that have a stroke. And what we'll talk later about things to do to prevent a stroke, they should also be very aware and and be mindful because a stroke can happen at their age too. Yeah, it is one of those things that we generally, a lot of us, I'm in my 50s, and we think of it as being something that happens when you get older. But sort of alarmingly, it's happening to younger people as well, right? That's correct. And there are a number of reasons for that. Someone might be young on the age, but he has had high cholesterol, high blood pressure for a long time. So, for example, when we do vessel study, we call it angiogram. There are some angiograms in patients in their 30s and 40s, which look like patients in their 80s and 90s. Hmm. And so we call them their vessels are old, although their numerical age is low. And that is usually product of being unaware of those risk factors and not correcting them. Well, that's really interesting. As you say, their numerical age or their chronological age may be young, but the things inside, the vessels and all of those things because of you know, risk factors or behavior and lifestyle and all those different things that people tend to do to themselves, they're older on the inside than they appear on the outside, maybe is the right way to put that. Uh, you mentioned that we were going to discuss how to prevent or lower our risk of stroke. So let's do that. First, everyone is at risk of a stroke if they're unaware of what's happening to their bodies. And it is more so for people who had a stroke once. They are at high risk of having a stroke. And there is something that is commonly called mini-stroke, and that is a sudden onset of a stroke deficit that then resolves, and there's nothing found on the scans. It's also called TIA. And those people are also at very high risk of having a stroke. We could be potentially devastating in the following few days to weeks. So the things that they can do to prevent a stroke, I would group them in two because, I mean, obviously doctors know what to look for, but if like common people want to know what to do to prevent a stroke, things that they need to change in their lifestyle and things that they need to be medically aware and go talk doctor and seek medical care there. 
So most important thing in the lifestyle, if they want to choose to do one thing, if they smoke, stop smoking. The smoking increases the risk of a stroke up to six times. There's almost nothing as strong as stopping smoking that we physicians can do to reduce risk of a stroke. And if someone quits smoking, the good news is after five years, the risk of having a stroke is like someone who has never smoked. So there is, as they might say it, some forgiveness that our body does. It's not like saying, okay, you've been smoking like 20 years ago, now I'm going to revenge now. It's after five years, it's the same risk level as a non-smoking person. The second thing is be aware of your weight. And weight causes many other problems, high blood pressure, diabetes. Try to control it, reduce it. Third is exercise. And fourth is diet. So there is very strong finding that people who eat Mediterranean diet, which is high in vegetables, high in fruits, high in nuts, olive oil, and low in carbs, is uh, promoting the health. So these are the things with the lifestyle part of things. And then there are things that they need to be medically aware. So if they have been diagnosed with any of these medical conditions, they should make every effort, work with their doctors to control that condition and optimize it. And those are high blood pressure. So very important to work with your internist or family doctor, take medications and follow other recommendations. Diabetes. Usually, there are multiple ways to control diabetes. It's a combination of changing lifestyle and medication. High cholesterol. And again, it's done by a combination of medication and changing the lifestyle. And these are the most common causes of a stroke that can help us prevent. Yeah, it's good to know. I mentioned earlier that time is of the essence. Time is brain. I'd like to have you tell the audience why it's so important if we or someone else is having a stroke that we get to the emergency department as soon as we can. Very important. Another misconception could be when a stroke is done, it is done. That is not correct. In fact, we have two of the strongest treatments in the history of medicine to treat a stroke. There are medications we can give to certain types of a stroke that help lies and bust the clot. We call it clot busters. And there are procedures we can do in, again, certain types of a stroke to open up a blood vessel and help the brain to get the blood. And both are very, very effective in reversing the symptoms of a stroke. But there is importance of time. So there are time windows that they are effective. And some of them, they cannot be applied if it's too late after symptoms. And the others, they still can be applied, but the benefits would be very limited. So very important to call 911 and relay to the operator that we suspect the person is having a stroke. Because after saying that, there are certain rules and regulations that the EMS will do to get the patient to the closest center where he can receive the best stroke care. Yeah, as they say, time is brain. This has been really fun today, actually, to pick your brain a little bit and learn more about stroke and how we can prevent it. Of course, if you smoke, quit smoking. And I know smokers are tired of hearing that, but it's an important one. So, doctor, thanks so much for your time today. You stay well. Absolutely. It was a pleasure. Thanks for your time, too. And to schedule an appointment with a neurologist at Jamaica Hospital, please call 718-206-7001. And if you found this podcast helpful, please be sure to share on social media and check out the rest of our library at jamaicahospital.org slash podcasts. Thanks for listening to Jamaica Hospital Med Talk, the podcast from Jamaica Hospital Medical Center. I'm Scott Webb. Stay well. All the content of this podcast is intended for general information purposes only and is not intended or implied to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Please consult a medical professional before adopting any of the suggestions discussed on this podcast.